The elections are over. We got four more states that just legalized uh, recreational marijuana. That would be California, Nevada, Maine, and Massachusetts. Uh, <clears throat> Arizona fell a little short of their goal. Um, and there's a couple other things going on that we don't want to talk about, like Michigan that had the signatures to be recreational on the ballot and hemp. Um, none of that happened. Uh, well, there's, uh, there's good news on the horizon still for the East Coast anyway, or New England in particular. So now that Maine and uh, Massachusetts, you know, and I mean Maine, we haven't heard a lot about Maine in the news. Uh, I think there was one or two stories that came out right after the legalization where they got together with the, the law enforcement and the city council people and the government, state government people to talk about what's going to happen going forward. But since those states legalized, uh, you have three more states in play in 2017 in New England and one not in New England, that would be Texas, who just put forward a, a bill to legalize marijuana in the in the Texas state legislature. First, it has to pass all the way through there, get signed by the governor, and then it's going to be on the ballot for voters to decide on in 2017. I'll do a story about that as it develops. <clears throat> So in Connecticut, you have Governor Dan Malloy, uh, formerly opposed to legalization, is now considering it. Uh, Connecticut decriminalized small possession in 2011, and in 2012, they added a medic or they passed medical marijuana laws. And he said, "I've never been an advocate of uh, recreational legalization, uh, but on the other hand, of course, when multiple states move in that direction, you have to re-examine your own personal thoughts on the issue." I'm just like anyone else, he said. And that's what the governor said the day after the elections were, you know, Massachusetts and Maine and California and Nevada legalized marijuana <clears throat> when there was already four states and D.C. So D.C. is also in the neighborhood and they uh, legalized marijuana for recreational uses after decriminalizing and that was all after their medical marijuana was passed. Um, advocates within the Connecticut legislature See it as a positive new form of revenue for the cash trap state. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, so I'm, there ain't really much else to say about Connecticut. Uh, we'll wait and see what they put on the floor. But yeah, the it seems like the advocate that I read about was talking specifically about, you know, revenue, which is, it, it's a good talking point, but there's a lot of other reasons to legalize marijuana. And one of them probably is the drug war is a failure. All right, let's face it. Nothing has been a bigger failure than the drug war. Um, nothing has went in with uh, a set of goals that has never been reached. And in fact, most of those goals, instead of going towards the, the way of the goal, like less drugs, well, there's more drugs. Instead of less potency, there's more potency. Instead of drugs being more expensive because, you know, there's people in the black market are afraid of getting caught or whatever, they're, they're cheaper and they're more potent and they're pre more prevalent. They're everywhere. <clears throat> so then you have Rhode Island, where uh, Democratic Governor Gina Raimondo said she will take uh, a more serious look at legalization just one week after Massachusetts voter voters voted to legalize recreational marijuana. And again, when your neighbors do something, you know you want to keep up with the Joneses, right? And it's too it's getting to the point where you can't you can no longer say, oh, we're waiting for the data to come in uh, on Colorado. The data's in, and there's no there's no buyer's remorse there, so. You know, they don't even use that excuse anymore, unless you're Chris Christie, of course. Um, and by the way, New Jersey, you're going to be looking at uh, 2019 or 20 before you're having any serious conversation about legalizing recreational marijuana. As long as Chris Christie's around, I don't think it's going to happen. She wants to get the regulations right and worries about safety. So again, we see the Democrats uh, not really doing the job of the people kind of still taking the um national kind of prohibitionist uh tactics of you know safety and all this stuff though you know the only thing dangerous about marijuana is when you get caught with it and it's illegal so that's it that's it um democratic house speaker nicholas Mattiello uh says he is ready to take up legislation in 2017 eyeballing tax revenues once again <clears throat> And then last but not least, we have Vermont, um, which they already had legislative action in 
the 2017 or the 2016 early session and I had a vote on it. It, it was a Senate bill that had already passed the Senate and on the, the House struck it down. <clears throat> they're some, you know, their, their actions are waiting. They're just waiting to come back in session. Uh, let's see. We got Senator Dick Sears, Democrat from Bennington, said that the Joint Legislative uh, Justice Oversight Committee will hold extra meetings, uh, six extra meetings to be exact, to discuss numerous issues surrounding marijuana. Uh, among them, the availability of medical marijuana. And this is before the end of the 2016 session. A lot of these meetings have already happened. This article is a little old. Uh, they will go from six to 12 meetings. I believe this came from like early September. But anyway, uh, and the additional six meetings will all be about marijuana. And in the last session, the Senate passed a, leg a legalization bill, but it was shut down by the state or by the House. Uh, the anti-legalization camp didn't like the Senate's proposed regulations on cultivation and sales. Um, if you looked at it back then, it prohibited uh, home cultivation for people for recreational use. I'm not sure what it did, if anything, to the existing medical marijuana program that they have in Vermont, but I might have to end up doing a special about this before the session comes back in and, and just get to the bottom of it. So Sears, the Democrat from Bennington, reveals that the Dem Democrats are also using this national model of proceed with over-the-top caution uh, when he sets up these meetings agendas. And I got to, I got to say, man, these Democrats, like I said in previous videos, are not, they're not exactly uh, known for legalizing marijuana. Just so happens that people that want to legalize marijuana just seem to lean a little bit more left and ha have more liberal views overall. Not everyone, but the vast majority of people that want to legalize marijuana, you would consider them liberals because they're pretty much laid back on most social issues for sure. So on cultivations and sales, he said that they wanted to be able to grow medical marijuana uh, and sell it at, lo at local farm stands. Now, this is this is when the last one didn't pass. Um, he, this is the guy that the Sears guy that's the Democrat that's actually for the bill, but he he's quoted as saying about the last one, they wanted to be able to grow marijuana and sell it at local farm stands like you would tomatoes. Now, although that's complete fucking bullshit, because like I said, there wasn't even home grows allowed and uh, they were leaving the regulation of setting up the uh, actual store, you know, where this stuff would be sold. That was going to be up to local municipalities. So, um, it, you know, that's just kind of absurd. Um, another meeting topic was access to medical marijuana, which is a good thing. You always want to make sure that there's enough access to medical marijuana for patients. But he also said that he also said that screening for DUIs or drug driving was a major concern. Um, how, why is that always a major concern? Because he's taken the, uh, I don't know, ALEC, if you're familiar with the, the lobbyist group ALEC, they're probably the ones passing around this stuff or the Heritage Foundation or any one of these right-wing think tanks. They're the ones that, you know, tell you what they think and what they think should be good or this is going to work or people feel like this or that. Sometimes they have their finger on, you know, they have it right. Sometimes they don't. A lot of times they're just coming from the right and they're acting like people are asking for too much. So when the Senate passed the original uh, in February 2016, he is quoted as saying, for me, the question has always been, does the current system of prohibition work? And the answer is clear. So there he sounded more like a Bernie Sanders, enough of his, enough is enough type person from Vermont, when in fact he really, I don't know how he said that then, and then now he's flipped it over to, oh, last time they just wanted to like, sell this shit on the side of the road. Uh, and at the time, another Democrat in the Senate, John Campbell, said, why are we saying let's legalize another drug when we have people who are in the grips of addiction? I mean, what the fuck, Democrats? That's something a Republican would say. That is right-wing propaganda right there. First of all, marijuana is not addictive. And uh, legalizing another substance, <clears throat> it's the one that don't kill you, so legalize it. Uh, Sears lied about the bill that didn't pass the House because it didn't allow grows to be widespread or farmers markets to distribute. Medical growers opposed to the bill because it didn't allow for home growing, which opens the door for the cultivation game to be given to, to a handful of rich investors 
who steered the legislation to enrich them while still criminalizing home cultivation, which is pretty ugly if you think about it. Sears said the bill at the time was good because it addressed the issues home growing, of home growing where he felt and uh, the other states had, quote, got it wrong. Well, um, I got news for you, man. If you're trying to legalize marijuana, um, you have to allow home growing. For example, beer is, a, you're allowed to make a certain amount of beer. I think it's like 450 gallons a year or some crazy number. And wine, you're allowed to manufacture your own wine. You can grow your own tobacco. Um, can you grow your own Oxycontins? No. So we're not saying that you should be able to grow your own medicine. Yeah, we should. You should be able to grow your own medicine if it's proven to be safe. Marijuana is definitely the safest medicine that there ever was. Prove otherwise. The burden of proof isn't on us anymore. No one's died from it. Um, the burden of proof has always been on you. And the people that want to prohibit marijuana have never came up with a solid uh, argument as to why there should be a certain amount of plant count and all this other stuff. Because marijuana is not dangerous. Like when Hillary Clinton talks about, oh, we need to study it more so we know what the dosage should be on certain marijuana medicines. The dosage is take it until you feel better, continue taking it afterwards to prevent further uh, you know, illnesses from coming on in the future. And just basically overall, stop acting like it's some kind of super dangerous thing. We got to like tiptoe through this and always being worried about the kids just being... You know, you're ruining the world for the adults by worrying about stuff that isn't even a thing and then talking about the kids. Like, oh, you're sending the kids the wrong message. That's a Republican talking point. The wrong message I would think that you're sending kids is that if you get caught with marijuana, which the kids are smart. They got phones. They look at the Internet. They, got, they know how to use Google. They read the news. Little kids read the fucking news these days. Believe it. Because it's available. You know, before they were like, oh, this boring shit, sit here, watch this corporate news with my parents at 6 o'clock. Nobody wanted to do that. But now that you have the news at your fingertips, it's juicy shit. Oh, they're saying marijuana is bad for you or whatever. They look at it. They look into it. They, they see real quick that it's all bullshit propaganda. So lying to these kids is the stupidest policy. It's the dumbest policy. Be honest with them. And then from there, we can have honest discussions instead of telling everybody that we have to live in this nanny state because of the kids. This is an adult world, not a kid's world. All right. You don't go. I mean, it's just not. Just look around. It's an, it's an adult world that we live in, man. Even Disney World is an adult world. So, um, yeah, when you're talking about this, the, these Democrats in places like Rhode Island and Vermont, um, we always think of Vermont as that, you know, that place where transgender uh, lumberjacks grow small batch uh, ginseng and, you know, play banjo music all day while smoking weed, let's face it. That's, a, that's what our perfect imagination tells us Vermont is. But in reality, the Democrats are over there spewing right-wing talking points, trying to keep marijuana something that you can get arrested for. And it's just not acceptable, man. The Democratic Party needs to get a grip and stop being so centrist or so right. The people deserve better. They're, the people out there that are fighting for certain things that the left uh, is always fighting for, they want answers. They want their leaders to be held accountable as to why these things aren't getting any better. You know, it's called neoliberalism, neoliberalism, I'm sorry. And it's what keeps us going to war. It's what Obama, we got, we got seven countries that we bomb in now. When he started, we had two. Um, it's like you, you get a good idea and no one's fighting for it. Uh, see you next time.